said I'ma crush it. Call me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Anthony Walker, your host of Unsung Pittsburgh's nonprofit news magazine show. In this episode, we have something special for you. As you can tell, we're coming from Market Square once again, enjoying the holiday season, and we gathered the crew to uh, help us celebrate the holidays. Joining us is Christopher Whitlatch, who's going to fill you in on what makes this episode so special. Hey, thanks, Anthony. You know, it's, it's a wonderful time to be in Pittsburgh here at the holidays. There's a lot of stuff going on here in downtown and also around the area. It's also been a great year for Unsung in 2012. And this is our holiday episode. And so for our holiday episode, we want to bring you some of the best moments of the year, some of the strongest stories we have, and we want to remind you why it's important to stay involved with our area nonprofits. So let's take a look at 2012 at Unsung. I'm Bruce. I'm Jordan. I'm Mike. We're the Visionaries. We're here at the Westmoreland. And we're here to Crash Art on Tap. Let's go. Art on Tap is a happy hour program. We have um, once a month. It's always the second Friday of every month um, from 5 to 7. For $7 you get two drink tickets. We serve beer and wine. There's also soft drinks. We always have entertainment and then of course you get to spend time in the museum. It's kind of a, a happy hour event where the, the conversation is lively and, and of course the culture is, is also showcased. But the nice thing about it is people can kind of relax in a, in a less than clinical or professional level and, and have the conversations that, that lead to the development of this community. I'm Sue Kerr and I'm the founder of the Pittsburgh Tote Bag Project and we're here today in our office. What we do basically is collect tote bags that we then pass on to the food bank and they're distributed to 300 or so pantries in 12 counties. And the reason is that it makes it easier for people to carry groceries. It's about access. It makes it a little more dignified to use the food pantry if you're using the same kinds of bags everybody else is. It reduces their dependency on disposable bags and it frees up money. So every bag that we donate is three or four bags they don't have to buy. And that's money that could be spent on food. So we've been doing this for 19 months and the response has just been incredible. We're all volunteer, our budget is less than $2,000 that we've just raised from donations that people give us literally handing me $5 here, $10 there. And we've collected over 22,000 bags. Thanks, Anthony. We have a very special guest with us here at Unsung today. This is Dean Williams. Dean, who are you with? Hi, my name is Dean Williams, as he said. I'm the director of an organization called Formerly Convicted Citizens Project. Uh, we're basically a public policy organization that uh, works to eliminate barriers to successful reintegration for people with criminal histories by advocating for public policy change through new legislation. We're here at the Allegheny County Jail, standing out in front of it. How many people in, in the city of Pittsburgh are formerly convicted individuals? Um, it's estimated there are more than 70,000 people in the city of Pittsburgh that are burdened by criminal uh, histories. 70,000 people. And Dean's going to tell you about how we don't want those 70,000 people to end up back here in the Allegheny County Jail because that costs the taxpayers money and that's not good for our community. We've also been seeing uh, tremendous progress in the reconstruction of Point State Park which is wrapping up with the final phase, which is the reconstruction of the iconic Point State Park Fountain, which is expected to be completed in uh, late spring of 2013. Better than ever before, with uh, a higher jet of water, with state-of-the-art LED sustainable lighting, with a new disappearing waterfall feature and a splash pool for people of all ages to be able to come down and picnic and enjoy the fountain up close. And of course, enjoy the view of the fountain from the hills and valleys that have made Pittsburgh famous. 2005, when I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with type one diabetes and I wanted to do something to raise money for a cure and um, to donate to researchers at through the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. So um, when I'd visit my grandmother at her house, she'd teach me how to make bracelets and do different 
beading projects, and I came up with the idea that maybe, you know, I could raise $100 or $200 for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. We mainly do bracelets. We also do earrings and necklaces. They're made of glass beads and lampwork beads and with pewter spacers and different crystal accents and gemstones. Thank you, Tony. We're here today in Market Square to talk with Jamie and Allie McNutri, two young women who've taken their lives to Haiti to keep families together with their organization, Haitian Families First. Our organization, Haitian Families First, um, is really aiming to keep families together and to keep children who might have to be put in an orphanage or taken out of their family. And then we provide help with education, um, paying tuition for schools and helping with all the additional costs that go along with that, like books and uniforms. My name is Mark Dixon and I'm the producer of Yurt, Your Environmental Road Trip. And we like to say it's an environmental documentary film that's not depressing. So basically my friend Ben, his wife Julie, and I uh, hit all 50 states in one year to explore the good, the bad, and the weird about environmental sustainability all around the country. We had a good time. Um, we saved all of our garbage with us in the car the whole year, about one shoebox for all three of us each month. We're thrilled that we did it and we tried to encapsulate as much as we can in this featured documentary film. I'm Rosa Davis, Executive Director of POWER, and I'm going to introduce you to the organization. Come on in. Let me tell you about POWER. POWER was established about 20 years ago to provide drug and alcohol treatment services, especially for women. We started with a 25-bed facility in Swissville in an old renovated convent, and the idea was to provide a safe space for women to come and heal after a rehab stay, for example, women that needed more treatment but also needed some support reconnecting to the community. Since that time, we've grown to all of our programs and services to include a, a full range of drug and alcohol treatment services, all designed to reflect the lives of women, and really pay attention to those things that, if not unique, to women matter most to them. Kid Mobile Detailing was developed as a vocational program under the Fairweather Lodge model, which is a housing program for adults with mental illness. It's run as any normal business would be run just under the umbrella of the 501c3 organization. This was set up by our own home and it was actually 10 years in the making to establish their Fairweather Lodge out of Moon Township. The Fairweather Lodge program was actually developed in the 1960s by a Dr. Fairweather because he saw that adults with serious mental illness, many times uh, the families, it's not that they had given up on them, but they'd been through a lot and it was difficult for them to find stable housing. And without stable housing, you can't have stable employment. to perform live music after they had shows downtown. It connects that back to the current community and the kids that we work with and it allows us to bring them into the legacy and let the legacy bring them out of that. We're gonna let the kids take over. Thank you. How you doing today? Good. I have a few questions for you. Okay. Were you always good at football or did you have to practice really hard? No, actually you have to practice really hard. And football is not my own first love, actually. I really like to play basketball more than I do football. How do you like being executive director? To get to work with lots of interesting artists, like um, Esperanza's Falling and lots of other artists. Some days it's really hard. It's a lot of work. It's hard to be in charge of lots of people. It's hard to have to think about how you're going to um, raise enough money and how you're going to plan for everything and have it be a success. So what's great about being a police officer? The best part for me is being an officer in my own community, where I live. Who's your number one role model and what did you learn from Jill? Actually, my number one role model is my mother. She was my mother, my father, my hero. She did everything. She provided for us, but at the same time, allowed us to go out there and be kids and have fun and enjoy every moment possible. Um, but my role models, you know, are varied. Sometimes it's your family. My, my dad is a role model in many ways. Um, a lot of uh, singers, you know, people that were older than me, that embraced me like a little sister. Hey Anthony, guess what? Unsung's at camp today. We're here at the Woodlands Foundation. It's a 32 acre facility just north of Pittsburgh in Wexford. And it's got year round activities. We're gonna find out everything there is to do right here. The Woodlands Foundation started as the Spina Bifida Association, but in 2000 we became the Woodlands Foundation where we opened our doors to all people with disabilities and chronic illness of all ages. So we serve throughout the lifespan from eight to 108. 
Here at the Woodlands, we have a 32-acre campus. We have indoor and outdoor activities. Some of the activities that you can take advantage of here at the Woodlands, we're very lucky. We have a adapted golf course. We have a therapeutic adapted aquatics pool. We also have adapted archery as well as a barrier-free and accessible campground. My name is Nina Barbudo and I am the founder and I run Assemble. It's a community space for arts and technology. I also work for the Science Center and the STEM Center for the girls programs, the girls math and science partnership, and I'm the program manager for that. Assemble, as I said, is a community space for arts and technology and we serve as a platform for artists, makers, and technologists to come and to share their expertise with our neighbors of our community of all demographics. We invite people to come in and to engage in our space through experiential learning, through creative processes. Of hey Anthony, I feel just like a kid today. I'm back at school here at the Lachlan Children's Center in Sewickley, Pennsylvania. We're here to learn about the wonderful past of this organization and its bright future in front of it. And Doug Flory is going to take us on a tour. Well, Christopher, this is the lobby of our 1956 building. Um, it was built specifically for Lachlan Children's Center. But the organization itself stretches back to 1897. Uh, so we have three departments academics, psychology, and speech. The academic department um, does evaluations of kids um, pretty much school age all the way up through high school. We have a psychology department that also does evaluations, often in tandem with the academic department, but they also do individual child counseling. I'd like to thank the Veterans Leadership Program for inviting us to film their 2012 Veterans Tribute which shared many moving stories. Unsung is proud to present our own video tribute to our men and women that serve our country. It was our pleasure covering all of the stories in 2012, and we hope that you will join us in 2013 for more stories from our nonprofits. And we also want to give you this challenge. Not only do we want you to get involved in 2013 and help make our community better, but we also want you to get involved with Unsung. Bring us your stories, and we'll get them on the air for you as well. Thanks, and have a wonderful holiday season and a very happy 2013. Thanks, Chris. And as he said, let's see if we can make 2013 100 times better than 2012 and give back to the community even more. So, for Chris Whitlatch, Michael Sorg behind the camera, Melissa Carey, Sue Kerr, I'm Anthony Walker, your host of Unsung. Have a happy holiday, safe holiday, and we'll see you next year in 2013, where we'll continue to bring you the nonprofit news from the region. Keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I out in a pace car. Go, Chris. No, you're doing fine. Josh, you used to do this stuff. Yeah, hold your